Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor, and you're listening to episode 124 of the Listening Time Podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope that your English learning is going great. Today, in this episode, we're going to talk about something that's very relevant to me, and some of you might be interested in this subject which is how to make a podcast. I think this is an interesting thing to talk about because I have a podcast, of course, and I have some experience uh, producing this podcast uh, and doing all the different things that you need to do to have a podcast. And so I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about how I make this podcast and the process that I go through. And if you want, you can uh, take some of these tips and put them into practice and make your own podcast. I've actually had some listeners ask me about this topic. Uh, They've asked me for advice and for information on how to make a podcast. And Nowadays, it seems like a lot of people are interested in making podcasts. So this might be something interesting for you. So hopefully uh, this episode will be useful for some of you. And even if you're not interested in making a podcast, this episode should still be interesting uh, because you can learn about what I do to produce this show. And of course, it'll be good practice for your listening, as always. So that's what we'll talk about today. And before we start, remember that my new podcast is available, U.S. Conversations, in which I talk to different Americans from different parts of the country, and we have natural conversations about different topics And of course, you have the transcript and you have the definitions of key words and phrases on that transcript. So if you're interested in that, make sure to click on the link in the episode description. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want my specialized training, my listening practice seminars, to help you understand native speakers when they speak fast, then make sure to join my membership. The link is also in the description. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who might find it useful. And please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about how to make a podcast. So I'll go through the different steps that I had to take and uh, my daily process of how I produce the listening time podcast. So let me start by talking about podcast hosting platforms. So what is this? Well, in order to have a podcast that is transmitted uh, to these different podcast apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc., you need to host your podcast somewhere. You need to host it online, just like you would host a website. Some of you might have a website, and if you do, you know what I'm talking about. You have to pay to host your website somewhere, right? Otherwise, no one can uh, access your website. (laughs) It's like it doesn't exist. So you have to pay for a podcast hosting platform if you want to have a real podcast. Obviously, you can just have a podcast via YouTube, like a video podcast maybe, but that's a little different. I'm talking about a podcast where it 
automatically goes to all of the podcast apps every time you upload a new episode. So if you want that, then you need to pay for a podcast hosting platform. There are a lot of different options, and I'm not going to go into all of the options here, but you can easily find them uh, with a simple search. By the way, when I use the phrasal verb go into something, this can mean to talk further about a specific topic, to go into detail about that topic. So I'm not going to go into all of the different hosting platforms. You can uh, look that up if you're interested. So once you've chosen your podcast hosting platform and you sign up and you pay probably, then you'll get an RSS feed for your podcast. So what this is, is kind of like a link that you'll use and you'll submit it to these different apps. Uh, really, when I say these different apps, I'm primarily talking about two of them, <laughs> Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Those are the two most important podcast apps nowadays. So uh, there are those two. There are some other ones that you might submit them to. Um, but if you submit uh, your feed to those two apps, then that will cover you in terms of a lot of other apps because a lot of other podcast apps, if I'm not mistaken, I think they just use um, Apple Podcasts directory or they uh, find your podcast if it's on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or other places they'll kind of automatically find your podcast at some point and your podcasts will start to show up on a lot of different apps. So uh, if you are just starting out, you need to make sure you submit this RSS feed to Apple Podcasts and Spotify and maybe a couple others. And this feed is important because it updates. So every time you post a new episode, this uh, feed will be able to update and these podcast apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts uh, will automatically post your new episode. So you don't actually post directly to Spotify uh, or to Apple Podcasts. You don't post directly there. You just post on your hosting platform and then those podcast apps will automatically update your podcast and will release your new episodes uh, automatically. You only need to post them on your hosting platform. So that's pretty cool. And by the way, a lot of people ask me, uh, where can I listen to your podcast? Um, if they uh, find out I have a podcast. And uh, I always tell them anywhere, <laughs> whichever app you have, because that's how it works when you have uh, a pretty big podcast. Um, it's available everywhere. <laughs> so I'm not posting directly to any specific uh, podcast app. It gets distributed to all of them. So you can listen wherever you want, of course. And in terms of how much these hosting platforms cost, well, I uh, paid somewhere between 100 and 200 per year, I think it was, when I was using my old hosting platform. Nowadays, I have a network. Uh, it's a little bit different. I'm not going to go into that, but I don't... Uh, pay for this hosting platform the same way that other people do. So I can't talk about what I pay now, but in the past, I used to pay over $100 per year. Uh, I don't remember the exact price, but I'm sure that's a pretty 
normal price for a lot of these hosting platforms. So I just wanted to give you an idea about the cost. And how about the equipment? So when you're making a podcast, really the only requirement is to have a microphone, right? Uh, something to uh, record your voice, obviously. And you have a computer, that too. Um, there's one other uh, piece of equipment that's important, in my opinion, which is a pop screen. This is that screen that goes uh, between the microphone and your mouth so that uh, the microphone doesn't pick up the popping sounds when you make P sounds or K sounds. Um, if you don't have this pop screen, it can be too much for your microphone when you make those sounds and it can ruin your audio. So you should also have this pop screen. They're pretty cheap. Uh, that's not a big investment. So if you have a microphone and a pop screen and a computer, you're good to go. <laughs> you don't need much else. And of course, other people have other equipment that uh, is um, more advanced and that makes their podcast sound better with better quality. I don't have all of that. I just have the bare basics. So I can't talk too much about that. By the way, when I use the word bare, like in the phrase bare basics, I'm saying just uh, the very basics, the essentials, nothing else besides the essentials is what I'm saying. So I just have the bare basics. And so now let me talk about scripting your episodes. So I script my episodes. I write a script before I record the episode. However, this script only contains bullet points. Uh, a bullet point is like one point on a document that gives you a general idea, but it doesn't give you all of the details and the words to say. So let's pretend I'm recording an episode about cars and maybe one bullet point might be um, driving conditions in my city, right? So I know I'm going to talk about that, but of course I don't write down every word that I'm going to say. I just improvise and talk naturally, but I follow those bullet points usually. So I write a script with bullet points. Uh, and of course, before that, I have to come up with ideas, obviously. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to come up with a topic for the next episode. But uh, I've recorded over 100 episodes so far and I've been able to think of a topic for each one. So hopefully I can continue this streak and I won't run out of topics. By the way, the word streak in this context means that you do something continuously again and again and again without failing. That's a streak. So hopefully I can continue this streak and I can uh, think of topics uh, for all of my episodes, but sometimes that can be hard. And I always try to choose evergreen topics. Something that's evergreen is something that's always relevant. So I don't usually talk about current events. I talk about general topics so that when people listen uh, years later, it's still relevant. Uh, if I uh, don't have an evergreen topic and someone listens three years from now, then it might not be interesting for them if that topic was only relevant uh, three years prior, right? Uh, the word prior just means before, okay? So I tend to choose evergreen topics maybe not 100% of the time, but 
so far, most of my topics have been evergreen. Now, let me talk about recording and the software that you need in order to record a podcast. So you have your microphone, your pop screen, your computer, and you have a script, you want to record an episode, well, you need some recording software. So you need some type of application uh, that will allow you to record. I use Audacity. This is one of the most popular ones. It's a great application. It's free. It works really well. Uh, and you use it to record your episode and to edit the episode afterwards. So I open Audacity and I start recording my episode and I talk and say the things I need to say and Audacity uh, captures everything. By the way, I wanted to mention that in this podcast, I speak slowly, of course, and some people think that it's easy to speak slowly, but it's actually not. It's actually hard <laughs> to speak slowly. It takes a lot of effort. So the recording part of this process is actually a little bit uh, challenging for me. Uh, it's not the easiest part, actually. Some people might imagine that talking, uh, talking slowly for 25 minutes or whatever would be the easiest part, but it's actually not. It's actually one of the harder parts because it's not easy to talk slowly and clearly. So I just wanted to mention that uh, in my own podcasting process, uh, the talking part is quite challenging, actually. But yeah, let's continue on. Uh, after you record your episode, then you have to edit the episode. Um, my episodes are really easy to edit because I just cut the mistakes that I make or the uh, times when I mess up, I just cut those out and then I add in the intro and outro and that's pretty much it in terms of the editing part, the cutting and all of that. However, there's one other thing that I do. I use an app called Levelator. Uh, this is an app that makes your sound more level or more even so that you don't have a really wide range of sounds and volumes. It just uh, levels everything out. It's a really cool app. It's free. It works really well. So I use that. And I do one other thing. I use the noise reduction feature in Audacity. So when you record sound using a microphone, in most cases, the audio also includes uh, a low hissing noise or white noise, I might call it. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you can look that up. I don't want to uh, simulate that here because it's not pleasant, um, but there's this a low noise that makes the audio sound um, a little bit worse. And so it's important to get rid of this. And I didn't do that in my earlier episodes. So I think you can hear that in the earlier ones. But um, in my more recent episodes, I use that noise reduction so uh, you shouldn't hear it as much. Um, so I reduce that background noise and that helps the audio sound better. So that's another thing that I do uh, during the editing process. Uh, and like I said, I put the intro and outro there and that's pretty much it in terms of the editing. And then I have to export it so you export the audio into 
a, a file, like an MP3 file, for example. And one thing that I think is important here is to make sure that you get the metadata right. When I talk about the metadata here, I'm referring to the data that is uh, inputted when you're creating your file. So you have to put things like your name, uh, the title of uh, the project or whatever, uh, maybe the album, if it's uh, like a song uh, that you're recording, right? Uh, the year, the genre, things like that. It asks me for those things. And I always make sure to get the metadata right because a lot of people say that if you don't uh, pay attention to this metadata, it might affect the performance of your episode. It might not perform as well if you don't get the metadata right. I don't know about this, but I don't want to um, hurt my podcast performance potentially. So I think it's important to just uh, take 30 seconds to make sure that you input the right metadata and just do that before you move on. So that's one other thing that I do. And then for my podcast in particular, uh, the most time consuming part, the thing that takes the longest is the transcript. So the vast majority of podcasts won't uh, have a very uh, detailed transcript that the podcaster makes on their own. Uh, they might have a transcript, but it's not something they spend uh, a lot of time editing or revising. Uh, that's just not something that's important for most people. However, my podcast uh, is specifically for English learners who are uh, learning English and listening to me talk and need help sometimes. So they need this transcript. So I have to pay attention to this transcript. I have to spend a lot more time uh, on this part of the podcasting process, whereas some people don't even think about having a transcript for their podcast. So this is something unique uh, to my podcast. So what do I do? Well, I take my audio and then I import it to a website called Otter. This is a popular transcription website. And I use the Otter paid plan. So I have to pay for this so that it allows me to import audios every month. So I import my audio and then Otter transcribes it. However, it doesn't transcribe it 100% correctly. Uh, no transcription site does this, uh, at least at the time of recording this <laughs> uh, in 2023. Maybe in a few years, uh, this technology will be more advanced, but up until now, none of these uh, tools, even the AI tools, none of them can create a perfect transcript with perfect punctuation exactly how you want it, with perfect paragraph breaks, and uh, especially if you're talking with another person, it's much harder for these tools to get it 100% right. So it's not gonna be 100% correct even after I've used this transcription service. However, it will be pretty close to 100%. But for my podcast, pretty close is not good enough. <laughs> I need it to be 100% uh, or almost 100% correct uh, sometimes. I make mistakes with the transcript, of course, but what I do is I take this transcript that the website uh, generates for me, 
and then I listen to my whole podcast episode while reading this transcript and editing this transcript. I do this simultaneously and I have to uh, make a lot of punctuation changes and capitalize letters and things like that. When you capitalize a letter uh, or a word, this means that you use the big letter, right? You use a capital G instead of a lowercase g, right? So uh, that's uh, what I do. And sometimes I have to make other uh, alterations. And this is uh, one of the longest parts of the process. Probably the longest part <laughs> is doing the transcript. And as you know, I now have a new podcast, uh, my U.S. Conversations podcast. And for that podcast, the transcript takes a long time. It takes hours to do that uh, transcript. Uh, it's a lot of work and it's really tiring because I'm talking to another person. It's not just me talking and we're talking at normal speed. We're interrupting each other and the sound quality isn't perfect. It's recorded over Skype, of course. So uh, the transcript service has a lot harder of a time getting that type of uh, conversation um, correctly transcribed. Uh, so it takes me a long time to edit those transcripts. Uh, for this Listening Time podcast, it doesn't take as long, but it still takes a while. And after I've done the transcript, I upload it to Google Drive and get that link uh, so you have that available. And then uh, I upload everything to my podcast hosting platform site and I upload the episode. I do the description. Uh, the description is where you add all of the information and links that you want to add. So the transcript is always in the description, uh, the link to my membership, the link to my new podcast, the links to my eBooks, uh, any uh, sponsorship links. Uh, if I have a sponsor for the episode, uh, I might have a link there. All of that stuff goes in the description. That's really important so that people can go down and click where they need to click. And then I schedule the episode. I schedule it for whenever I want it to be released. And that's pretty much it. There might be a couple things I do that I didn't mention. But for the most part, that's how I make my podcast from beginning to end. So hopefully this can help you if you want to make a podcast. Hopefully this was interesting for you. And before we end, remember that if you want to uh, check out my new podcast, my U.S. Conversations podcast, if you want to practice with real conversations between native speakers, uh, then make sure to sign up for this podcast. The link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash U.S. Conversations. And the link to my membership is down there as well. So join that if you want my training to help you understand native speakers when they speak fast. And you have the links to my ebook if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker and you want to read fiction in English, then check out my ebook down there. And of course, you have the transcript there as well. And if you like this podcast, please share it. Please give it a review. Please give it a five star rating. All of that. That really helps me. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. <laughs>